This is how to play Out on a Limb, a tabletop tile laying game by Drawing Board Games. I'm going to show you how to play this just by playing through it. Okay, what's in this box? Hmm, got some meeples. A quick start guide, uh, which if you're watching this, you probably don't need. On the back is the score chart, which we only need at the end of the game. So I'm going to set that aside. Uh, we got the tiles in here. Okay, so we're going to set up for two players. The setup is the same regardless of how many players you choose, but uh, this game, I think, goes up to four players. So from two to four players, it's the same setup. Uh, give each player four meeples. And I think these white meeples show up well on the camera, as well as these gold ones. These clear ones, I'm just going to set aside and out of the way out of here take one meeple from each player to put on the score chart which will be used at the end of the game and then give each player their meeples and deal six tiles to each player so again doesn't really matter how many people are playing it's always six tiles so I'm going to deal out my tiles. I'll go back and forth just to randomize a little bit more. Don't want to cheat, you know. Okay, so that's six tiles for each player. And actually, we don't need these tiles anymore. Or this box, so this is out of here. Okay, so each player has their meeples in their hand and the first player is the player who most recently ate a fruit which uh, I ate a raisin today which is a grape so I think that means I go first so I'm just gonna flip over the starting player's hand here you know usually you would keep these secret from other players and on your turn you can do one of two things you can place a tile from your hand onto the table, or you can place one of your meeples onto a tile that's already on the board. However, it's the beginning of the game and there's actually no tiles on the board yet, so as the first player, I have to lay a tile. And you might be wondering, well, which tile do you lay? Well, I haven't explained scoring yet, so probably wouldn't have a good idea right now, but you know, I'm just gonna reveal some of my strategy I like to put out tiles where I don't have a lot of the color, so I don't have a lot of purple, so I'm going to lay this one down for now. And that is the end of that player's turn, and we're going to go on to player two. So player two, we're looking at their hand, because now I'm player two. What is player two going to do? Hmm. Well, again, it has the options of either laying a tile or placing a meeple onto an existing tile. It's early in the game, and you know, I haven't really explained scoring yet, but basically when you when you place a meeple on a tile, you're claiming it to score at the end of the game. Laying a meeple on a tile this early is not a good idea because you don't know how many points it's gonna be worth. So I'd probably refrain from doing that player two. And uh, instead I'm gonna lay a tile. And so just for example sake I'm going to lay this tile down. And the rules for laying a tile are that it must match at least one of the colors on the side. So currently I can only play a tile that has purple on it or a green vine on it. Uh, this one has purple, so I'm going to lay it down and I have to, have to connect it to the purple side. Laying it over here would not be valid. You know, this is not valid. It just don't make sense. So you always have to connect at least one side to a matching vine. So I'm going to lay this one, and that is the end of, of player two's turn. Okay, back to player one. So now player one's conniving over here. And uh, they're going to lay down, let's say, this tile. They could either lay this tile here, or they could lay it over here. And it doesn't 
I don't think it makes a difference right now, but they're gonna, let's say they wait here. Okay, that's the end of player one's turn, and back to player two. Player two. It is your turn. Okay, and just for example's sake, player two this round is actually gonna lay down one of their meeples. So they just get to pick one of these tiles to score points on, and uh, all of these are about worth the same at the moment, but we'll go with this one. I think it's worth the most. Um, so now I'll uh, explain scoring, even though you only score at the end of the game, but just for example's sake, I'll score how much this is worth at the current moment. So uh, how scoring works is you start from the tile that you place your meeple on. So no note that like when you when you place your meeple down, you're, you're not claiming a specific vine per se. You're claiming the three vines that are represented by this tile. So there's like a fig vine going on here. There's like a plum vine going on, and there's these pine cones. So I'm going to score this one uh, just as an example. So right now. By claiming this tile, I know that I'm getting at least one, two points, because there's two fruits, two, two fig fruits along this purple vine. So that's at least two points for the fig. Um, and then I'll count this pink plum vine. I get, two, there's two plums along this, so that's two points. So four points so far. And then I also get to score these center uh, fruits, which they don't connect via a vine, but as long as it's adjacent to another tile that has the same center, uh, you score points with it. And it, it acts like a chain, so it connects down, you know, can connect down like a long length or, you know, around or whatever. As long as there's adjacent uh, center fruits in a chain, uh, you score points for this. So for this example, uh, this player would score three, three points for the pine cones. So that's what, two plus two plus three. Uh, so seven. So currently this, this tile is scoring seven points. So that's how scoring works. Um, some extra notes that you need to know about scoring is that there is a maximum number of points that you can score along a vine, and that is uh, a max of five. So, um, you know, if, you're, if your vine gets up to like six or seven long, it's not doing any, any good. You, you want to get up to five, and then after that, you know, you don't really care anymore. So I think that's all you need to know. So now, uh, I'm going to keep playing the game uh, like I've been doing. I'll probably fast forward and then I'll come back to the end of the game and we'll do the official scoring at the end. And uh, I think one of the things that I forgot to point out was that um, you can't score the same vine twice with the same meeple. So, for example, you know, like if you're scoring points with this, if you lay a, if I, if I lay the meeple here, this meeple wouldn't score any points. It would score zero points because basically this this meeple is already scoring the yellow and the pomegranate, but yeah, the pine cone and the pomegranate. And this one is already scoring the purple uh, fig fruit. So since you can only score a vine once per player, um, then this, this meeple isn't doing anything. However, you know, another player could go here and they would score the points, but it's only, you know, between your own meeples, you can only score a vine once. So vine can be scored multiple times, you know, between other players, just not the same player. Anyways, continuing. So I finished the game here, and uh, I'm going to move the scoreboard on the other side since there's, looks like there's more room over there. If you haven't been able to tell, the hard part of this game is that uh, you can share points with other players. So, like, you know, you can build up a long vine, but it's really easy for another player to just jump on it and claim the same number of points. So the difficult part of this game is, like, how do you break away or branch out branch from your competition? I guess you got to go out on a limb. Anywho, I'm going to start scoring the white uh, meeple first. And uh, let's start with this one. So counting up the points for this one, we get, uh, let's see, one, two, three for this persimmony thing. Oh, three for this fig, the center of figs. And it looks like three for the pine cones. So three, 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 and that's the nine. So moving us up to nine. All right, so that's that maple. Now let's go to this one. Okay, so this one, 
one, two, three, four, five, which is the maximum number of points you can score anyways on a vine, so no point in counting more. Uh, so that'd be five. And then how many for the pine cones? There's a lot. One, two, three, four. Four pine cones and one, two, three plum looking things. So five, four, which is nine plus three, twelve. Twelve plus nine, twenty-one. Twenty uno. So that was this one. It's moving this off. And then uh, let's count this last white maple over here. One, two, three uh, persimmons. One, two pomegranate looking things. And one, two, three pine cones. So that was three, two, which is five, plus three, so eight. Eight plus twenty-one, twenty-nine. All right, very well done. Pat myself on the back. Okay, now um, on to the gold player. We'll start with this one. So this one, three persimmons, three figgy looking things, and three pine cones. So nine, just like the white player. So like I said, you know, there's a lot of time and there's a game and it's figuring out how you're gonna get ahead. Um, so now let's count this one over here. We got one, two, three persimmons, no plums not going to be good. Plus five. So five plus three is eight. Uh oh, this is looking like a tie. Uh, Seventeen. And let's see, let's count this last one here. We got one, two, three pine cones. Uh, no centers. Not good. And one, two, three figs. All right, so that's three and three, that's six. So six plus seven is 23. Okay, so a clear uh, victory by the white player. Congrats to me uh, for beating myself. Yeah, so that's how you play this game. Uh, very quick, uh, simple to play once you learn the rules. You know, easy to play with kids or, or family. Uh, very aesthetically pleasing. You can pick this game up at Board Game Crafter, I think, is the only uh, site where you can buy it right now. So I'll share a link in the description below if you want to pick up this game, if you don't already have it. And if not, if you're just learning how to play this game, have fun with this thing.